Hey, my name is PJ. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to build an ant weight robot uh, using two of these little guys right here, Futaba S3003 servos. Uh, what we're going to do with these is we're going to take them apart, uh, go through, make sure that the uh, top gear, the actual drive gear that moves the control horn, can give us 360 degree motion. So we're going to chop the little uh, plastic bits that prevent it from doing that. And then we're going to clip the top off the potentiometer, glue that into place, making sure that there's absolutely no movement when we do so. Um, and then we're going to mount two uh, landing gear wheels onto the ends of these by sandwiching them together, two of the circular control horns. Um, other things that we're going to do, we're going to take just your standard everyday frying pan. Whoa, that's not it. Uh, and we're going to modify it and turn it into a spinner robot. Um, and I'll describe how we do that later. Uh, we got to get a proper battery system. I choose to go with the uh, lithium polymer batteries because just for what you can afford and the amount of power to weight, the voltage that you get out of them, it's the best way to do it. I mean, all that could be better than that is lithium ion, but you know, those are kind of expensive right now. And these are good for the RC stuff. Um, other things we're going to be using, the actual radio system, alright? Um, now this is just stuff that I have myself. I use this controller right here uh, for flying my RC planes uh, and driving around my little robots that I build. Um, so these generally run a couple hundred dollars. You can get them cheaper, used. Um, the only thing with that, you got to be careful who you buy them for. Make sure it's a reliable source, alright? Uh, the thing I like about that system right there is the receivers. They're very small. These are... Uh, it's an AR6000 uh, radio receiver. It's put out by Spectrum. That radio system I showed you earlier was a DX6, um, and this is the receiver that goes with it. So um, pretty much these just weigh very little. I don't know the exact weight on them right now, but I'll get to that later. Um, but the nice thing is that they've got multiple channels. You can have multiple model memory in the transmitter. Um, that's why I choose to use those besides the light weight because we're trying to fit it into a low weight category. Um, pretty much that's all we're going to be doing. I'll just basically break down the dissection of those servos and um, get, uh, get an actual robot built and show you guys how it works. Alright, so here we go. Okay, so what I want to show you right now is uh, basically what a stock S3003 servo looks like when you first get it out of the box. It's just pretty much all put together, and it only you can only get the servo to move that far. It won't go any farther than that. You can get it to go the other way, and it won't go any farther than that. So what we want to do is we want to make it so that it'll go all the way around, and we can get full 360 motion. All right. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this as a drive motor. It's a lot cheaper than going out buying like a normal brushless or brush motor plus the speed controller. These you can generally get for like maybe 25 bucks, 30 bucks or so, depending on where you get them. Um, and the nice thing is they're relatively compact for what you're getting. The power is pretty good. They're a little slow, but you know, for certain uh, robot applications, that's okay. Um, so what you do is when you pop this open, I've already taken out the screws just to speed this up. The screws come off the bottom. What you get when you open it up is you get a set of little gears in there. We're going to keep all these gears, um, but one of the things that I want to show you is get over to this right here. Pop all these out. Just make sure you keep an eye on everything. You don't want it all flying away. Um, you get into this right here. Right here, this little piece that my finger is on. You can't really see it moving, but um, basically what you do is you can look at it. And it rotates back and forth. What that's called is the potentiometer. It's a potentiometer. And what it does is it measures uh, the amount of movement that uh, the motor um, puts out to the uh, drives, uh, the, uh, what do you want to call it, the, the drive gear, the main output gear. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to cut the top off of that. And in order to speed it up again, I'll just show you, you what you normally do. You take a pair of wire cutters. You can use these, you can use the flat ones, whatever you've got, they should work. Um, and what you do is you just kind of clamp them on down at the bottom as close to the inside as you can, make it really easy on yourself, and then just squeeze it, let it pop off, 
and it should be relatively flush, but if not, um, then what you usually get is this right here. This one's almost done. It's not 100% yet, but as you can see, that's a lot smaller. It's like almost flush, but um, in order to clean that up, what I usually like to use is I like to take out my Dremel, flatten that out, um, that we don't have the actual gear catching on it. Um, so pretty much, you've got it that far, but you also want to, not just that, but you want to go in and take this gear out, and on the upper part of it here, let's see if I can get that open, <laughs> just show you guys real quick. Pop off that control horn, and then this gear right here, as you can see, I don't know how well you can see it, but there's a little knob on the top, very top of this gear, so it's like right there, you see where my finger's touching it. What you want to do is you also want to go in there with the wire cutters and you want to snip that. That's going to, unless you snip that, that's going to prevent movement from going all the way around. Um, and then again, clean it up with the Dremel, make it very, very nice, smooth you don't want to have problems when you're driving this little buggy around. Alright, so then after you're done with that, what you want to do is go back to the potentiometer. You're going to want to line this up with the um, transmitter and receiver on, and you want to make it so that that little gear inside of here is not moving. And the way you do that is you take this and you turn it until there's absolutely no motion, and you got to really be meticulous about this because that's where you can really cause some problems um, but just uh, go through there uh, make sure that that's stationary glue it I, I like to use um, either epoxy or like just a normal uh, uh, model builder glue uh, what you don't want to do what you don't want to use is a uh, CA glue or hot glue those two are gonna be kind of uh, problem elements in building these because CA glue it'll run the hot glue could melt some of the parts if you're not careful, or it'll just sit in there and remain rubbery, which will allow the potent potentiometer to move again. Um, so again, just use epoxy or some sort of model building glue. Alright, so that's that right there. We'll get back to that. Um, but anyway, I want to talk about the, um, the dome that I made right here. This is just basically your standard frying pan. Um, and what I've done is this little knob right in here is actually a nose cone to an RC plane. Um, and what I've done is just drill that a little hole, pop that in, and uh, put a few washers in there for uh, a good clean fit. And then uh, one of the other problems I kind of ran into when I was uh, drilling out the frying pan, and you can see these bolts right here, those are good for ripping people's other robots apart. Um, the, the handle was on this side. And I thought, okay, so there's a little hole there already. I drilled it out a little bit more and um, just decided, okay, here, that's a good spot for a weapon. And put these little bolts through it. Um, and I have tested this before, and what you can do is I set up, like, different cans and bottles, and it'll it'll rip them in half. So you got to be really careful when building these things, you guys. Um, so put two of them, one on each side. Make sure that you balance this out, because these right here, if you do not put them on equal sides of the pan. Your robot will go out of control and it will flip. And it could cause some really heavy damage to you or materials around you. So if, if your mom's got an antique cabinet, I do not suggest testing this thing inside. Uh, best place to do it is either in a controlled environment in a box with uh, not plexiglass, but you're going to want to get that bulletproof stuff because these can rip right through it. Alright, so just get the strongest stuff you could find, even a metal box, but you got to have a lid on it because, again, it will hurt you. I cannot stress this enough. These robots, they tear each other apart, alright? So just a couple bolts, nose cone, drill a couple holes, make sure you get the correct drill bit, okay? You don't want to use a wood bit on a piece of metal. Alright, so just, that should cover it. We'll get back to it later when it's on the robot. So it's going out of here for right now, alright? So there's the frying pan. Now, uh, only other thing, I've already found my main robot frame. Alright? I know this is kind of rushing through it, but it's short amount.